comfort food is today's Camper Christina Cooks topic. I'm going to be making a pork roast. Um, I love making roast um, and probably I think that anyone that knows me really well would say that my best, best meal uh, is either beef roast or pork roast because I make uh, really good gravy and uh, the roast usually falls or like falls apart. It's super, super tender. So um, hopefully that'll be the case today when I make this one. Uh, so basically what I have is I have a pork tenderloin. Uh, it was on special at the Foodland. I, I bought it uh, a couple weeks ago, threw it in the freezer, and I just defrosted it yesterday. Um, and so that's all ready to go. And uh, I've got some carrots here to put in and uh, tomato paste um, because I didn't get a chance to go to the grocery store to get some tomatoes. So I always keep a, a bunch of these uh, little tomato pastes on hand because uh, they're super convenient if you don't have... Um, any fresh food or fresh tomatoes on hand, um, you can just use this instead and it works just as good. Um, and then I have some Knorr beef cubes, which uh, I like to use. Um, just got a cup of water here, uh, which I'm going to put in the microwave to uh, boil and then the beef cubes will go in there. Um, so I'm going to get started by um, browning the meat and uh, this was a step that I have skipped um, quite a bit the last year and my roasts were not coming out right so um, I redid it I did a roast uh, two weeks ago and I actually did the the whole process that I've done like way before and it came out amazing so I think that was the problem so I got to make sure that I do not skip that process so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, take the pork tenderloin I'm gonna get a frying pan and put it on the stove here and I'm going to put some oil in it and I'm just going to sear the outside of the roast and brown it as much as possible all the way around um, so that that will help keep the juices in and keep it uh, nice and tender. Now in the meantime I'm going to preheat my oven to 400 degrees um, and then um, that'll be ready to go when uh, I've finished searing the meat. So let's get started. I've just got out my big frying pan here. Um, I could have used the regular size one, but I didn't want stuff, uh, you know, falling out and splattering all over, so I figured I'd just grab the big one. Uh, just put a little bit of olive oil uh, on the bottom. You can use cooking oil, any kind of oil. I don't think it really matters. Uh, I've been making uh, roasts like this since uh, as long as I can remember. My mom um, makes it this way, and that's kind of how I ended up doing it this way, so wait until that gets hot and then I'll dump it in the frying pan. In the meantime, um, there's no rush on this, but since it's done, uh, I've just got the, uh, put the mug in the microwave just to boil some water. And uh, I'm going to take two beef cubes and uh, dissolve them in the boiling water. Just drop them in there and let them, let them dissolve while uh, I do this other stuff and we'll come back and use this in a little bit. Just put that over there for now. Just grab a fork. I find uh, when you're dissolving beef cubes, it's easier to do them in um, in the water with a fork because the fork, you can kind of mash them and dissolve them a little bit, help them on their journey. Okay, my, pot, my pan seems to be sizzling now. It's getting nice and hot. So I'm gonna drop this pork tenderloin in there. Alright, so the meat is browned really nicely. Uh, you should be able to see that. Basically, I just put it on uh, about seven or eight and just put some oil in there and browned all the sides. Uh, the thing that I forgot to mention earlier was an onion. Um, if I don't have an onion, I just use some onion powder, um, but I did happen to have one, so I chopped that up. And I'm going to put it in here now that the, um, the roast is, is pretty much done browning. Well, that smells good. <laughs> okay, because the roast is uh, nicely browned on all the sides, um, I'm going to take it out. It doesn't need to be in here for this part. Um, the, the, the part that I'm doing now is um, I'm going to put in some stuff in here, and that's going to be the base for the gravy. And then I'm going to put it all in the 
uh, roasting pan and put it in the oven. Um, it's a fairly simple thing now. You just gotta use the right ingredients and get it all uh, in there and cook properly and uh, the oven really does all the work. Just got the onions in there and I'm just gonna let them uh, cook down a little bit and then I'm gonna add uh, the carrots and the tomato paste. I'm gonna chop up the carrots right now. They're, I just have the um, baby cut ones, the pre-cut ones. I'm just gonna cut them into uh, a little bit smaller pieces and throw them in here. Now I did also forget to mention that um, when I had the roast in the frying pan, um, I put a little bit of seasoning on it. You can just use salt and pepper. You don't really need much. Um, the meat I find is generally salty. And then when I put in the beef cubes, um, they have a lot of salt and seasoning in them, so I don't really find that uh, the meat is very flavorless or anything like that. My mom used to use paprika. Um, I don't really like to use that anymore. Um, I just use some roasted garlic, uh, which I got at uh, the farmer's market. Um, you can just use some garlic and some salt and some pepper. You really don't need much. So just got the onions in here, and they're... Um, sauteing. I don't really love the taste of onion, but I like it when it's combined with other things to make something like a gravy. Um, so these are actually just being broken down. That's why I'm uh, putting them in the frying pan here, uh, just to help break them down a little bit so that uh, they dissolve into the gravy and make a beautiful, nice uh, amalgamated flavor with the other ingredients. The onions were starting to get uh, thin and burning to the bottom and getting stuck to the bottom of the pan a little bit. So I just added a little bit of the beef broth that I made earlier, remember that? Um, so I have two beef cubes in here and just some hot water. I'll probably add a little bit more water to it um, once I fill up the pot. Okay, so I'm going to let that simmer and I'm going to add my carrots. I don't really like carrots that much, um, but I find that they do the same thing uh, as the onion does. They kind of just um, blend into the sauce and they actually act like little gravy pockets <laughs> and uh, they hold the, uh, the sauce in them. They also, um, I'm told, make the gravy brown or give it a nice coloring. So, um, And I guess they're good for you too. I don't know if they would be by the time you're done cooking for four hours or whatnot, but it's the, that's the vegetable that I'm putting in there. All right, so I'm gonna turn this up on high and I'm gonna pour the rest of the um, broth in here. Usually I just use water and I pour the broth in there, but I uh, the onions were getting really, really uh, sticky and burny and so I had this cup here, so I figured I'll just throw it in there, so throw that in there. I just noticed that uh, the beef cubes didn't really totally dissolve there in the bottom, which is uh, good that I have my fork and that's all good now. So, um, so I have the can of tomato paste. Now, the last time I made beef stew, um, I used tomato paste and I used too much. Um, and that was not good. Um, it tasted more like tomato sauce than gravy. Uh, the last time I made a roast, I used just a little over half the can. So about two thirds, two thirds of the can, I would say. And that is what I'm going to use today. Got that in there. And again, this is in lieu of tomatoes. I would usually use uh, probably one and a half tomatoes. Just chop them up and then they basically just simmer down into the gravy to make the gravy. So I've got all the makings of the gravy in here now. Um, and I'm just going to let this simmer for a little while on the stove, maybe about 20 minutes or so, um, just to let everything start cooking. And then I'm going to pour it all over the roast and I'm going to stick it in the oven and that's pretty much it. <laughs> So it's a pretty simple meal for something that tastes so rich and so delicious. We're just going to make a delicious gravy. And if you want at this time, um, I, I'm one of these people that likes to try to do everything uh, in advance if I can. Um, and you can possibly pre-thicken the gravy by just sprinkling a little bit of flour over top of this. 
and mixing it in. Um, and that way you don't have to uh, thicken the gravy after the fact if it needs it, which it usually does. So I've just uh, let this simmer for about 20 minutes or so, um, just to start cooking the carrots and, um, you know, getting the, see the onions are down to like bits already. They're starting to, to slowly dissolve into the sauce. Um, I added one cup of water um, equal to the cup that I put in with the beef cubes in it and I probably will add one more. Um, that's something that you just have to go by eye. Um, you know, you should have enough gravy in the roasting pan to hopefully cover uh, the roast or get close to it um, and eyeball it and kind of have an idea of how thick it looks. Like right now it looks really thick so I can probably still add some more water. It is naturally going to reduce. Um, while it's cooking in the oven and um, you can just add water accordingly here and there. Alright, so I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to take this lovely stuff here. It's going to make a delicious gravy. I'm going to pour it over the roast. There's actually was two of them in there. I thought it was like just one big one. but. So there it is in the pot. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Usually I take a couple forkfuls of the, the bits in the gravy and kind of put them on top of the meat, but there's just that one little piece sticking up. So I'm going to put the lid on it. And now I'm going to put it in the oven. Uh, I'm going to start it at uh, 400 degrees for half an hour. I'm going to drop it down to 375 for half an hour, 350 for a half an hour, and then down to 250 and 225. Um, and cook it on low until I feel like it's as soft as it can possibly be. Well, there's the roast on the plate. It looks fabulous. It smells fabulous. I barely could get it onto the plate. It was falling apart. Um, the meat is so tender and so um, moist. It just falls right apart. So that's really good. Um, here's the gravy with the carrots in it. It uh, tastes amazing. It smells really good. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take uh, a couple of forks and just pull the pork apart um, so it gets like pulled apart with the grain and um, put it all in the sauce and then I'll wait for it to cool down and then what I'll do is package it in uh, small Ziploc bags or some small containers um, so that I can take them or use them as individual meals when I'm winter camping uh, or fall camping or spring camping. Um, you know, I'll eat roast anytime. I'm not picky, <laughs> especially when it's really good. Um, so tonight I'm just going to have uh, some of it, one portion of it for dinner. I'm having uh, the basmati rice that I get from the Dollarama and it's already cooked. So basically I just have to, uh, I think you might use steam it or something in the microwave for a minute or two minutes. And then um, I will put some meat and uh, gravy over top of it and it's going to be delicious. I'm just uh, getting this pork and back into the pot and it's just falling apart like it's so tender. It's fantastic. The pork roast is done or pork tenderloin. I keep calling it a roast but it is a pork tenderloin technically but there it is. It looks really good. It smells so good. I wish you could smell it. I gotta go eat. Bye! Thank you so much for watching this episode of Camper Christina Cooks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye!